Okay, we're going to be palpating the external rotators of the acetabulofemoral joint. So we're going to do this as a group and slowly work our way from superior to inferior all the way down. We've already discussed piriformis, so we're going to be starting at the next muscle in line, which is going to be the superior gemellus. For the superior gemellus, we're going to be landmarking a bony landmark known as the ischial spine. So for that, I'm first going to be palpating at the bottom looking for the ischial tuberosity. So I'm going to be taking the palm of my hand and I'm going to be pushing into the low aspect of kind of where your sits bones are, where you're kind of sitting on this area. So this is your ischial tuberosity and the origin of your hamstrings. And I'm going to curl my finger just to the inside like so. Again, being mindful, not going too central in this case, avoiding genitalia and an uncomfortable hand location. We're going to be going straight up along this aspect here. Okay. So again, ischial tuberosity rolling just to the inside, palpating up, up. And I'm going to get to a point where it feels like it wants to turn or angle heading towards our sacrum. And this is the ischial spine right here. Just for clarity, I'm going to show you on the sacrum as well. If I'm going down the lateral aspect of the sacrum, here's the inferior lateral corner of the sacrum. So should we should have about an inch, an inch and a half of separation between the ischial spine and this inferior lateral corner of the sacrum. So this is the location where superior gemellus is originating. It's kind of that lateral part of that ischial spine. And the muscle is going straight lateral in fiber direction and attaching onto the greater trochanter. So again, I'm just going to sink in on the side here. Here is our greater trochanter. Now, if you think of the greater trochanter kind of like my fingers at the moment, we have a superior and a posterior. Well, it's actually attaching on the inner surface of the greater trochanter. So it's the medial aspect of the greater trochanter. So not kind of top, anterior, posterior, superior, but the inside of it. This is not going to be an easy muscle to identify through activation since a lot of the external rotators all work as a group and they all do the same action, which is external rotation. So we, I am going to sink in and then grasp the leg and lift it up and ask for that same external rotation if we're bringing the leg across the body, go ahead. And I'm going to strum gently up and down, but I'm not expecting to be able to easily identify the difference between piriformis versus superior gemellus and the other external rotators. It's going to be quite tricky. So more so being comfortable with your bony landmarks and that you're going from, again, ischial spine towards greater trochanter. Okay, the next muscle in line is going to be obturator internus. So I'm going to be starting at the bottom again, our ischial tuberosity. In this area, I'm going to turn my hand and then I'm going to again sink. I'm actually going to switch hands here just to make it a little easier. So ischial tuberosity, hook my fingers like so. And I'm going to travel up a little bit and just below that ischial spine, which we palpated here, this is going to be where the obturator internus comes out from inside the medial aspect of the ischium and pubis, and what is known as the obturator foramen. So that is really deep. I'm not gonna actually be able to get fully on the origin, but I'm hooking my fingers in towards that foramen as best I can, but you're not gonna be able to make contact with the whole thing. At this point, it exits out, going over top of the ischium, just below its spine. And just like superior gemellus travels laterally and inserts in a similar location in that medial aspect of the greater trochanter of the femur. As I said before, you're not going to be able to distinguish this muscle away from superior gemellus or inferior gemellus. So it is about trying to get the correct O to I. And when you treat these muscles, you're treating them as a group anyways. So obturator internus. We actually do not palpate obturator externus. So the next muscle I'm going to be looking for is inferior gemellus. For inferior gemellus, I'm going to be starting by finding the ischial tuberosity. 
And instead of going medial this time, I'm actually gonna go lateral. So I'm gonna go along that ischial tuberosity, staying to the lateral aspect of it, and go a little bit higher. It's probably gonna be about an inch, inch and a half. So again, here's the bottom rounding to the lateral and outer aspect of the ischial tuberosity and traveling up. And on that external surface of the ischial tuberosity is gonna be the origin of the inferior gemellus. With my other hand, I'm gonna be palpating for the greater trochanter again. And I'm gonna be trying to hook that internal aspect of it. So in this area from O to I, we have the inferior gemellus. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a cross fiber strum of the approximate location of this inferior gemellus, like so. And the final one in this group is going to be quadratus femoris. So quadratus femoris is a more palpable muscle than the previous three. So again, I'm gonna start with the origin of quadratus femoris, sometimes shortened to quad fem. I'm gonna be finding again this inferior aspect of the ischial tuberosity. And like inferior gemellus, I'm gonna to go to the outside and start to work my way up. And I'm gonna stay kind of right at the bottom. So here is the ischial tuberosity, and here's more just lateral to it. This is the origin right here for the quadratus femoris. Now this muscle is quite small and ends up taking on kind of a cubed shape. So as you head lateral, and if you were to sink in and go up and down, there's gonna be quite a tight ropey muscle band right in this area right here. So this is the palpable quadratus femoris. And instead of being on the internal surface of the greater trochanter this time, it actually attaches on a landmark that's just below that. So this landmark has two names depending on your reference. I'm gonna find greater trochanter, I'm gonna to go towards that posterior aspect of it. And as I start traveling inferior and medial right in this area, this landmark is known as the intertrochanteric crest, but specifically the muscle attaches to what is known as the quadrate tubercle. So quadratus femoris to the quadrate tubercle of the femur. So we have an origin right here on that lateral aspect of the ischial tuberosity and an insertion here on the quadrate tubercle. Now, because this muscle is quite low in this group, where you had piriformis somewhat turning into a horizontal abductor, towards the bottom, quadratus femoris turns into an adductor. So besides external rotation, it can also help pull the femur in. So let's just activate this last muscle in the group. I'm gonna point out just a pretty obvious landmark here. If you looked for a gluteal fold, so kind of right at the bottom of that glute fold, that's where it's quite easy to find the ischial tuberosity. You move slightly lateral to that, you sink in, you go up and down, and then you ask them to try doing that lateral rotation. This is an almost guaranteed find for the quadratus femoris muscle. So right inside here. Oftentimes people say it's as thick as it is wide, which makes it kind of look like a cube because it is quite short in its dimensions, but its thickness is actually quite dense. All right, this is gonna conclude my palpation of the external rotator group.